Hello everyone and welcome to episode 49 of our game dev tutorials. Um, today we're going to do a simple highlight shader. This has been requested by a Patreon and it was on my list of things to do so I figured okay well let's do that. Um, today we're going to start with uh, our normal shader that we made in the very first shader that we did and then we're going to edit it in order to make the changes. Uh, the reason we start with the normal shaders, A, we know it's working, and B, uh, many of the parts are the same. So um, we don't want to retype all that, so we're going to start that way. Um, we're going to compile and debug it, since I am going to type it out, and there is no you know, nice uh, IDE that I know of for doing shaders. Uh, it can be difficult because it's all just black and white and you're hoping make, to make sure you don't even have a single typo. So um, anyway, de uh, compile and debug. Um, we will then add the shader to the solution, code it up, and we'll test it. And um, yeah, I mean this one shouldn't be too too long. Alright, uh, but before we get started, let's uh, mention to like, subscribe, comment, do all those things. It really does help out. Um, keep the traffic up for the channel and keep things moving forward um, you know if, uh, if this is helping you in any professional manner make sure that you uh, consider patreon you don't have to do it but consider it um, and uh, discord I'm there uh, many of you guys come and talk to me that's wonderful I'm, ha I'm happy to help you know I can't code your projects for you but I can definitely point you guys in the right direction um, or at least give you kind of pseudo code on how you can do things so you know pop over say hi and uh, happy to help you out. All right, this is our normal shader here, and um, let's kind of go back through it real fast, just for people that didn't watch the old one. But if you did, make sure you do. Um, I'll try to remember to link it in the description, or maybe at the end of the video, I'll have a, a link to it. That's probably what I'll do. All right, so these are uh, the actual size of the image and the uh, size we're drawing it at. Um, so pretty simple. Uh, the reason we need to know those is because from those we can get what one actual pixel is on this scale uh, as opposed to uh, a pixel that's being drawn, if that makes sense. Um, and the reason we need to know that is because, well, for the normal shader we were using that to move pixels sideways, up, down, left, right in order to uh, test what their color was in order to interpolate between them so that it uh, so that it any aliased better okay uh, in this one we are going to do the same thing except for we're not any aliasing we're setting a solid color so um, we need that functionality that's why we started here um, this just pulls in our texture uh, which is the image that we're passing through our sprite patch um, this is pretty standard vertex shader output. Uh, we, you don't do much, much with the vertexes in, um, 2D. So this is just getting the position color and, uh, texture coordinate that we're currently, uh, using. You have to have these, um, really this is a copy paster, uh, at this point. This gets edited later, but it's not important for these shaders. I said they can get, I should say they can get edited. They don't have to be. Um, you don't have to use shaders, though they do really help. All right, uh, this line pulls in the color from the texture coordinate. So here's your texture coordinate, and then you have your texture, um, and which is called the sampler. There's the sampler, and then we have the coordinate coming in from the coordinate. And then that gets us the color of the pixel for the part of the image we're processing at this time. Remember, it's a pixel shader, so it processes all parts of the shader, um, every pixel in the shader, even blank ones. So consider that. This decides exactly where we're at, and this, sorry, not where we're at. This is the size of an individual pixel, horizontal and vertical, because it may not be square, so you, they, they could be different. Um, most of what I do, they're all squares, so it's not an issue, but it could be different. Um, in fact, I, I recommend you use squares, but the code will allow for other things. Uh, and then this is all the stuff that deals with uh, interpolating between those pixels. We don't need this. So peace out for that for now. Um, and then what we're adding to this uh, 
here is two ints. So we need to know how far we want to make our first. We're going to make two test passes. So how far we want our first test pass to be and how far we want our second test pass to be. So int len one, int len two. Very simple stuff, OK? Uh, and we'll use those in a minute. All right, the next thing we want to do is we want to get color set to zero to start with. So let's um, equals float four, O A T four, zero, 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 zero. Sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. What is a highlight shader? Let's go over that real fast. Um, or what is this one? I'm sure you could come up with 500 ways to do this. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to say, Okay, we got our guy, right? Let's let's just draw him. It's our wonderful, wonderful stick figure, because this is the kind of art that I can do on the fly, uh, and that's on the background, so that's that's a mistake. Let's copy that real fast. Duplicate layer, and delete our background, and no, because well, we can magic erase out the, the white. There we go. All right, so we got our guy. Woot woot. Um, how are we going to highlight this guy? Well, that didn't work out so good, did it? Um, actually, let's do that because this is actually going to solve something, to show you the downfalls of this method. Um, and that's okay. Showing you guys what's not right with this method is a good thing in general. All right, so a highlight shader, this is our guy. If we wanted to highlight around our guy, there's a few methods we can. Uh, employ. Um, we can literally detect the outside using uh, trigonometry to do so. Um, and you can find the um, the lines that are perpendicular to this the camera angle. And that's the outside of your character. And then find uh, I said lines. I actually mean you find the vertices. This is in 3D. It, it really won't work in 2D very well. Um, and then you color those vertices the color, and then all of a sudden you have a, a single uh, pixel highlight. You could then expand that based on other things, but that's one way to do it in 3D. In 2D, uh, you could, uh, while you're drawing this, if you pass in a hover bool into your normal shader, you could... Uh, detect the outside while doing all the rest of the things that we're already doing in the normal shader. Not so bad. Could work. Um, but now every single um, pixel of every single thing drawing on your screen is now doing a bull test for the highlight. And that's not super heavy, but it's like one of those things where, uh, you know, you're, you're starting to have useless things. And there can be a lot of pixels drawing on your screen. Uh, and a lot of pixels processing, because remember, if something's smaller, you're still processing the... If you're drawing something like a, a 512 by 512, but you're only drawing it like 50 by 50, you're still processing the entire 512 by 512 when you're doing your shaders. So keep that in mind. Um, anyway, so that is one method you could do, and it would work. And what would happen is you would color a little bit on the inside here, which would not may probably be what you wanted. And you'd color on the outside out here, which is probably what you do want it, and this would be completely colored in your highlight. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw everything just like it was. So let's copy this again, duplicate layer, um, and this one instead of being black, let's see, I'm not the greatest at this kind of stuff, so uh, let's do that and then do image adjustments brightness and contrast let's see does it do anything no oh yeah okay cool we'll just take that color everybody can see that hopefully good enough it's something different okay so we have this let's zoom in just a little bit we have this guy but what we actually want to do is we want to draw around the outside a little bit bigger so the same as we just discussed, except we're doing it on a separate draw. And the reason we're doing a separate draw is because we're probably only hiding, highlighting like a couple things at a time. So rather than doing that 
Boole test on every pixel that of everything drawn to the screen, we're only going to be redrawing the things that need to hover. So an example of this would be to do something like a um, stroke. So we have stroke, and then we have that. Let's change the color of our stroke. Uh, this is not my forte. Um, thought you could click on that. Or let's not for now. So we'll just say OK. All right. So normally we have this. And then we want to highlight it. See? Actually, it goes like that. Normally we have that, and then we want to highlight. That's what we want to do, essentially. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to literally draw it again. But we're going to draw it the color we want it to be. In this case, it'll just be white. And we're going to draw it with a couple pixels drawn on the outside of it. Um, I've seen people try to scale it up and then just do the same. And the problem with that is you have to recenter it, and that can get tricky with some odd things, um, especially in 3D. In 2D, it can get slightly tricky, not so bad. But this is the best, best method that I've found, um, and it doesn't cost a ton. So this is essentially what we're trying to do to do our highlight shader. Uh, why do I discuss this? Well, because um, th the ideas behind the shaders can be the hardest part. Um, understanding what you're trying to do can be harder than actually writing the shader, and you'll see that in a minute. This is simple once I describe it, but ask yourself honestly, is this how you would have thought of doing a highlight shader? If the answer is no, well then that illustrates my point. If the answer is yes, that's how you're going to do it, congratulations, you understand shaders, you're, you're awesome. Um, but I have to assume that we all don't. Alright, so, you know, we just, we deleted this, let's... Um, I needed a line out of here. I need this line. So, and then we're going to redo. All right. So, we have above color. And um, what we want to do is find out if the color above is anything other than clear. Um, and so, that's happening here. But instead of this, we're going to multiply it times len1 because you may want a, a bigger or thinner, uh, bigger, thicker or thinner uh, highlight. Now, this first one, you probably want it to be one. Every blue moon, I'll, I'll make it two. But if it's not one, it can be odd. Uh, sometimes you'll get a weird, like, hole in your highlight. Uh, but... I'm just going to mention that you can do whatever you want here and test it out to be whatever you want. That's why we're making it a variable to pass in. So we have the above color. We have the below color. That's this one here. And then we have to type that out. Um, and then we're going to have the color to the left. So left color. And this is, you just copy this right here paste it here zero um, and then this one is negative on this this is also supposed to be horizontal so horizontal and negative okay and then we have the right color all right so let's take a look at what this means I'm gonna zoom real far in here let's say that we are looking at I want pencil and I want it to be tiny okay that's not pencil whatever let's say we are looking at pretend these uh, grayed out pieces aren't there but let's say we were looking at uh, sorry this pixel right here. Right now what we're doing is we're grabbing this pixel, this pixel, this pixel, and this pixel. And what we're going to ask it is, if any of those are colored, be colored. So if I'm grabbing this pixel and I grab 
here, 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 and here. Obviously, that one's colored, so we want to color this one. And that's how we get extra data into the file. Okay? And then let's say that I have uh, my lin2 is 3. Well, out here, it's going to check here, 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 here. I think that was all correct. But anyway, um, and obviously, sorry, it was right here. When we check here, we got a color, so we're going to color this. This one, we would get this pixel here, again, colored. So around the outside, we end up with a um, a some extra pixels worth of drawing. And as extra pixels, when drawn directly behind the character, give us a highlight. Okay? Um, all right, back to creating. So this is our first pass with Lin 1. Obviously, we have a Lin 2. Let's do this. Copy the whole thing, paste it down here, and then what you can do is, oops, you can uh, remove these spaces. When I'm originally doing things, I like to put the spaces in, um, but that way you can clearly see your first pass and second pass. Now, instead of lin1, it's all lin2. Very simple. So um, lin2 should be 2 or greater. It should, lin2 should be greater than lin1 doesn't have to be. You could actually switch them up if you wanted to be. But in order to keep track of it in your own mind and make it easier to read, lin2 should be greater than lin1. Okay, very simple. Um, lin2 is going to give you kind of the thickness of your highlight. If you make it like 20, you're going to have gaps. It's going to look weird. But generally, 1, 2, 3, 4... Maybe even five work pretty good. That's a pretty thick border, by the way. A pretty thick highlight, five. So um, consider that. Oh, all those, so these have to be twos. So two, two, two. Whoops. Two, two. Okay. Now, we're going to have a giant if statement. And it goes something like this. If... Uh, text color which is the that's the base color here so if it's there if it's colored then we definitely want to have the highlight there so if text color dot a greater than zero so uh, a is we're testing the alpha uh, the alpha will automatically be zero if there's nothing there okay so we're only testing the alpha here it's all that matters you could test all the colors if you want to but it's going to take either three if you test for actual color or four if you test for color and alpha times as much processing data so this this works great use just the alpha unless you just don't believe me and you have to do it your way go for it uh, above color dot a is greater than zero or and I guess you can probably see the pattern so that's one of our eight so let's do seven more of these one two three four five six seven and then let's just do this below color, left color, right color, above color 2, below color, left color, right color, all of those were 2's. Okay, now if, if any of this happens, then we're just going to set color to our filter color. So color equals float 4, uh, filter color dot r, B G A, right? So B G A. Put our spaces in so it's nice and pretty and easy to read. R B G A. Okay, and then uh, we don't need those because those would edit the color, and we don't want that. We want our color to be exactly what we tell it to be. So our color is nothing. Unless it's within the range of something that's colored. And that's actually not completely true. Unless one of the eight pixels we're testing is colored. Um, now, with my verbiage there, you can tell that there is the potential for error here. If you have a single pixel sitting in the middle of something, it probably won't highlight as thick as you want it to. Or you'll have rings of highlights. It's going to happen. This is designed to be very efficient and very simple to understand. 
Um, it is not designed to be the end all be all of highlight shaders. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, but it works really, really well. I actually use something almost completely identical to this in Guilds of Delinar. So you can see the highlights in Guilds of Delinar. They're not horrible. They're not wonderful. Um, they do their job, and uh, you know they work good enough. Uh, I do need to soften the edges on them, but I, I haven't gone through and done that yet. Uh, when I say soften the edges, this is obviously setting a hard color. If I set the alpha to like half, so let's say uh, that Lin 1 hits, then we use the full color. But Lin 2, we could, uh, we could soften it to half of the alpha. And if you had a Lin 3 and a Lin 4 or whatever, you could soften it, you know, Lin 1's full color. Lin 2 is, you know, um, minus a third, Lin 3 is minus two thirds, and then Lin 4 is, well, it would actually still have to be a third, but anyway, fill in, interpolate between all those, um, and then you'd have the color. Okay, so let's save this, uh, we're going to control shift save, because we don't want to overwrite normal flat, and we're going to call it uh, normal flat highlight, I think, normal flat highlight uh, and that goes to my shaders folder and then uh, let's see I have my build project here for different some of the different shaders um, and then we need to grab that file that file make sure I have it There we go. We're going to put normal flat highlight in here. There it is. We're going to build that. See how we did. How many things did we break, huh? Ooh, first shot. Good job. Okay, so this is our highlight shader. So we're going to take this. And somebody asked this question on the first video, and I know they're not going to watch the 49th video forever, but I figure I will cover it since um, why not? So where did that compile to? Well, this is our file structure inside of here. You can see my different games and different things. Um, and then in here, I go into shaders, 2D, and I have all this, right? Um, it compiled, oh, sorry, I didn't go into bin. <laughs> sorry, you have, that's where it was, I just showed you where it was, and then I mess everything up, of course. Okay. Then you have this bin file with the exact same file structure. So inside shaders 2D, we now have normal hot flat highlight. Okay, so that's where it is. So when I'm dragging that out, that's where I'm getting it from. And I'm gonna provide these to you guys just like I always do. But I wanted to mention it because I don't want you guys not to know where things are. Sometimes I think it's easy to find things. Sometimes I'm wrong. So I want to make sure that I cover it. So content, copy of newer. Cool. Um, we now have that put in. So now if we go into main, let's find our shaders that we're declaring. So I'm pretty sure that's how we're doing it here. Yep, there we go. Let's copy throb real quick. And then we will uh, go to definition because we just want to make another one here and call it highlight effect. effect now we'll go back paste over that and then we'll go here we'll remove hat uh, flat I, I called them flat to keep them separate from my files um, but paste that in okay so now we've set it up it's ready to be used where do we use this how do we use this uh, it's actually pretty simple so um, we want to use it in mobs but for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, we're going to do anything attackable. Um, the reason for that is that it's simpler, <laughs> but also because I, I don't care if we scroll, if we hover over our own character that it highlights. Everything else that's attackable uh, essentially is something we actually might want to highlight. Okay, so. First things first, we want a bool, because we have a bool to tell us if the thing's supposed to be throbbing. We need a bool to tell if it's supposed to be hovering. So hover. 
hover equals false. Then we come here and we say hover equals false. So every time this updates, hover resets to false and then checks if it's hovering. Uh, offset and then hover equals true. Very simple, right? Like we've written basically five lines of code to do all of the hover checking. That was simple. Why? Because we already have hover written. Um, this is why you need to have wonderful functions like this and not try to type it out each time on your own. So we've done this five lines of code. That was, that was super fast. Now we just have to do the actual um, highlighting of this, uh, of this bit here. So this is separate of the other two things because we can highlight and throb at the same time. So we don't want it in the same if else uh, chain. So this is own chain. So if hover, and then this is super close to what we're doing. Remember, we edited the normal shader, so let's just do that. And then let's copy one of these things here. And we're going to need two of them. We're going to have lin1 and lin2. And then here, I'm going to feed it in one and three. OK, just static. You can make these variables if you want them to be. In this case right now, for our testing purposes, this is all we need. And then there's one other thing we have to do. We have to draw this. Draw what, you say? This. We have to draw it after we do this, this shader. Because we want to draw the highlight directly behind the actual uh, image. Okay. In doing so, you will get that outer layer. You won't see what's directly behind it. You'll only see the outer layer. Unless, of course, your image is um, clear, see-through in some way. Um, this highlight is not good for see-through things. Um, if you wanted the the see the non-see-through, what you would do? Let me let me just mention that real fast. If you wanted it to work with see-through objects, you would not include this right here. And not only would you not include this, you would say if this color is colored, don't draw it. So basically exclude it. Leave it this way. So basically your first if statement would be if this, then do nothing basically. And then then this would be an else and all the rest of this would work. Make sense? Okay. So that's what you can do. Um, we've set that up. No, it still says normal. We don't want that. We want highlight effect. So let's jump in. Let's redo that. And so now when we hover over a mob or anything attackable, including the portals or whatever, it should highlight. Let's give it a shot. All right. Play one. So that highlighted. Uh, that's, that's a little slightly not so great. That's a pretty good highlight. Highlights, highlights. And remember, you can change the highlight color. Let's uh, let's get something I can have throb and the highlight stays good. See? All right. So that is highlight. Now, these should not highlight because they're not attackable. And we're good. So that is how to do a highlight shader, guys. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Um viewership's been down quite a bit and I think that's partly because I haven't been getting videos out regularly but uh, you know I'm trying to do so as I mentioned before so please uh, hit that like button subscribe if you haven't comment below it helps drive the videos please do um, and it, I'm happy to answer any questions you have so if you've watched this and you're like I don't get it well ask and I will do what I can to uh, to uh, to do that, to answer it. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted playing the game. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that's it for this one, guys. Um, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.